Hallelujah. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Sing the song, Savior. He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. He's the altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Sing it again, Savior. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Hey. Lift your right and say, Father God, thank you for your presence tonight minister to my spirit show me your ways reveal Jesus to me Holy Spirit reveal Christ to me and I thank you for miracles for divine surprises in all aspects of my life thank you father in Jesus name amen please be seated Glory to God. Let's give a big hand of appreciation to the song ministers. Let's give them a big God bless you. Please take your seats. Thank you. Well, we looked at Mark chapter 8 verse 22 to 26. That was last week. And we discover three things. Intentions, intimacy, influence. Let's all go through that again. Say intentions, intimacy, influence. So the summary is that at any given time, we have intentions, objectives. We have goals, targets. And when we set out with that intention, that intention ultimately must lead us to Christ. A sound intention is an intention that leads us to Christ. Can you say that? A sound intention is an intention that leads us to Christ. So the best intention any human being can have is an intention that connects you with the Savior, with the Messiah, with Christ Jesus. And when we meet Jesus hand in hand, face to face, there is something about his presence that inspires us. And we discover that inspiration means insights. So when we have that intimate encounter with Jesus, closeness with Christ, suddenly there's a change of perception. We start seeing things clearly. We are able to understand things we never understood before. We are able to see things in a different way. We start seeing things from God's perspective. And when that transformation, when that event takes place within us, it triggers the power of influence, which is God's favor or advantages through our lives. And when God's favor settles on us, we become influencers. We become distributors of God's goodness. We become transmitters of God's power and his love. Today, I want us to look at that same scripture again because there are a lot in there that we need to glean from the Holy Spirit tonight. So Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 26. Mark 8, 22. Then he came to Bethsaida. Can we, do you have an NIV? That would help. Thank you. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus 
to touch him. This is their intention that Jesus would touch him. Verse 23, he took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? Now notice the question is, do you see anything? Jesus didn't say, do you see human beings? He said, do you see anything? Anything means anything. Verse 24. He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking. Is he seeing something? Amen. So actually the miracle are taking place. Because Jesus said, do you see anything? He said, yeah, I see people like walking like trees. Because he's looked up. And you know, human beings don't fly in the air. They walk on the ground. So if you look up, you are going to see a tree moving. But he, said, he interprets that I see people like trees walking. Verse 25. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Notice, they begged Jesus to touch him. But he has received more than a touch. Tell the next person, this is my first insight. That Christ over answers prayer. Tell the next person, my Jesus over answers prayer. Amen. You ask for a touch and you get more than a touch. As a matter of fact, through the scripture, he touched him twice. He touched him again. But more than a touch was the restoring of a sight. And I'm here to announce to you that these are times that God will answer the prayers of his people and he will over answer prayer he will over answer prayer amen he's still the same Jesus so there is a revelation of Christ that I want us to grasp tonight and the first is that he over answers prayer amen the second revelation of Jesus the beautiful heart of Jesus we see in this text is that Christ is accessible to all. He's accessible to all. Christ is accessible to what? To all. To everyone. He's a blind man. And I don't think they booked for an appointment. These people just grabbed this blind man and brought him to Jesus. But they were able to see Christ. The most busiest human being to walk on this earth was the Messiah, was Christ Jesus. Because he was living to die and rise again for the salvation of every human being. He should be the busiest person, yet he was accessible. These people were able to meet him. That is God's goodness in display. The God of the Bible is accessible. Jesus is accessible to everybody. The door is open and he says, come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help you in times of need. The beauty about the God of the Bible is that he's accessible. Jesus is accessible. So he doesn't just over answer prayer, but he's accessible. Tell the next person, my Jesus is accessible. Tell him, my God is accessible to all people. Amen. This man had no eyes, but had an appointment with Jesus. This is the beauty about Jesus. When you read the Gospels, amazing that most people you thought Jesus would not have time with, he was able to make time for. The God of the Bible is not too busy to make time for you. He's accessible. Amen. So regardless of what is happening in your life, note that he is accessible. Amen. The third thing we need to discover about Jesus in this text is that 
He gives special attention to all situations or needs presented to him. Jesus gives attention, special attention, to all situations or needs presented to him. They brought this blind man for Jesus to do something. That's a situation. An incurable condition. And Jesus would have said, blindness, I need three hours. So can you come in the evening? But he gave special attention to this blind man. And some of you that feel like you are abandoned or rejected, feel like you are just on the path of loneliness and nobody cares. There is a God who cares for you. Jesus Christ is his name. And he will give special attention to every situation or condition or needs you present before him. Amen. It is time to talk to Jesus. Because he's not too busy to listen. He's not too busy to pay attention to the circumstance or situation you find yourself. This is the beauty about Christ. The next thing we discover about Christ is that Christ connects with us regardless of the difficulties in our lives. Christ connects with us regardless of the difficulties in our lives. Can we have it on the screen? Christ connects with us regardless of the difficulties in our lives. It's amazing how Jesus says goodbye to all these sighted people and takes this man by the hand and walks with him outside the town. It's like, you are my body buddy. We are connected. Your problems do not intimidate me. Tell the next person, your problem does not intimidate Jesus. Amen. We serve a God who is not intimidated by our problems. He's not ashamed to reach out the hand of help when we are going through difficulties. That is why I'm so grateful in many ways that Jesus is not like Christians, most Christians. Jesus is not like most Christians. And Jesus is not a Christian. He's God. That's the beauty. Because most Christians abandon you when you are going through difficulties, but not Christ. Not Christ Jesus. He connects with us in our difficulties. When we are confused, he reaches out. When all hope is gone, he still connects with you. He's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen? Amen. This is the beauty about Christ. You are blind, but I'm still connected to you. You look like a problem in society, but I'm still connected to you. It seems you have nothing to give because you are beggarly. As a blind person, you have to beg, but I'm still connected to you. He connects with us regardless of the difficulties in our lives. No matter how low your heart has sunk, no matter how confused and complex the circumstances you face tonight may be, there is a living Savior, the creator of this, word, of this world, a living word that became a human being, died and rose again, and sits at the right hand of power, and he reaches out to you. He connects with you in spite of the difficulties in your life. The next revelation we see about Jesus Christ in this text is that Christ walks with us and guides us to a point of victory over our circumstances. Christ walks with us and guides us to a point of victory over our circumstances. He walks with us. So there's intimacy. There's relationship. And he guides us to a point of victory over our circumstances. 
So Jesus Christ takes hold of this man hand to hand, face to face, and he guides him. This man didn't know where he was going, but when Jesus is guiding you, you are sure to arrive at a safe destination. Not a disappointed end, but a beautiful end. He walks and guides us to a point of victory. He brings him to a particular location, ministers to him, and now the circumstance is under the feet of this guy. The blindness is gone, and for the first time, he can see clearly. Circumstances you are facing tonight looks impossible to conquer. Some of you, the devil has emailed and she mailed all kinds of messages in your mind. And you think this is how things are going to be. Wake up, smell the coffee. There's a changing season. And this too shall pass. Amen? This too shall pass. Because Christ is on the throne. Your Redeemer lives. And he is going to guide you through these unusual times. To a point of victory over every circumstance you find yourself in. Amen. 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 Oh yes. He's our guide. It's amazing what Apostle was sharing. That the Lord is our shepherd. He's our guide. He's the one walking with us and guiding us. And one of these days, you wake up and that mountain has been moved. You wake up and that circumstance is under your control. Amen. Victory awaits those Christ leads. Victory always awaits those Jesus what? Leads. Christ. If he leads us, victory is guaranteed. Amen. This blind man was not walking by himself. It was Jesus holding his hand and leading him. And he brought him to a particular point where the problem was gone. And the heavenly provision that has never shown up in his life, is released. And this will be your story. I said, this will be your story. The same Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, forever, is going to hold you and guide you. And you will be victorious. You will not be victimized by the circumstance, but you will gain victory you gain victory over that circumstance. Because when he walks with us and guides us, victory is guaranteed. Hallelujah. I believe this blind man will be thinking, where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Let me save my little energy to go back to the town begging. Tell the next person, trust him. Tell the next person, trust him. For he leads you, he's guiding you to a point of victory. Amen? Yes. This is the beauty about Jesus. This is why we love him. This is why we celebrate him. This is why we are committed to his cause. There is no one like him. Amen. The next revelation about Jesus in this text is that Christ leads and guides us from the known to the unknown. From the known to the what? The unknown. The blind man didn't know what Jesus was going to do. Only Jesus knew. All he had to do was to follow. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. He followed him. From the known. The known is the town. He, he stayed in that town. I believe it's a place where he goes to solicit for help. That is the known. And when a blind person had walked in a particular place for a couple of time, the sensories have an ability to know where everything can be located. That there is a gutter six steps forward. That there is a tree seven steps on the left. That is the known. And for most of God's people, we are caged in the known. This is how life is. 
This is how my life has always been. But the God of the Bible wants to take your hand and plug you out of the known into the unknown. There are things you don't know about God that God will reveal to you in these unusual times. There are certain things about you yourself that you don't know that God will reveal to you during these unusual times. And there are things about your circumstance and conditions that is hidden from you that God will make available to you. Advanced knowledge, profitable knowledge, transformational knowledge is coming to you. Amen? He leads and guides us from the known to the unknown. Not only that, but he leads and guides us from the convenient to the inconvenient. He leads us from the convenience to the inconvenient. The convenience is the town. That is its base. The inconvenience is outside the town. We don't know how many times he's gone there. And he cannot see even to trace where Jesus is taking him. So for some of you, go, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> but he leads him. He leads him. And the inconvenience is the fact that for the first time, maybe, somebody was going to baptize him with something from his mouth. I don't want you to imagine it. Very inconvenient, yet very significant. I've realized the foolishness of Christ is wiser than the wisdom of the world. Amen. The worst Jesus can do cannot be compared to the best the world can offer you. I said the worst Jesus can do in your life cannot be compared to the best this world can give you. Amen. So if you think this thing is the worst, let's see if the world can heal your eyes. Nothing could cause these eyes to see. But what people may presume as the worst produce the best in his life. And this is the beauty about Jesus that makes me love him so much. That at times he leads and he guides his people from the convenient, from convenience, and he takes us to the inconvenient. But in the midst of the inconvenience, he produces significant feats, amazing things that nothing in life could produce in our lives. We love him. What a savior. What a helper. This is the beauty about Christ. He also leads us from the usual to the unusual. Tell the next person, get ready. To move from the usual to the unusual. Amen. It's not usual for this man to see. His usual thing is to be led by other people, depending on people to lead him. But now he can see. He has to wake up, brush his own teeth. He has to iron his own clothes or whatever, wear his own clothes. Now he has to take personal responsibility from the usual to what? The unusual. Lift your hand. Say, Father God, I receive this mercy. I receive this grace. Jesus, do it in my life for your glory. Amen. He leads and guides us from the predictable unto the unpredictable. From the predictable to the unpredictable. The predictable thing that Jesus, predictable way Jesus was healing people was that they would touch him and then virtue goes out of him and they get healed. Most times he would speak, rise up and walk. That's the predictable. So people could predict, oh, we know what he's going to do. <laughs> he's going to take some spittle, mix it on the, in the sun, put it on the ice and tell him to go and wash. Tell the next person it's different this time. Tell somebody 
this time is different. It's different. Yeah, it's different. It's different. So for some of you, you've already predicted how the future is going to be. That if it's tough in October, then December is going to be very tough. You'll be embarrassed by God's mercies. I said you'll be embarrassed by God's grace. God's grace will embarrass you. You'll be overwhelmed by his goodness. I want to say this and let it be captured. That come end of December, it will be as if nothing happened on the earth. It's as if the COVID didn't happen on this planet. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because the God of mercy will visit this globe. Even in this month, getting to the end of this month, suddenly there will be an outbreak of medications. Outbreak of vaccines. It's already there, but there's power play going on. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, those power play is over. In Jesus' name. Suddenly, it will be popping up in different nations. Amen. It's only three countries on the face of the earth that will have some serious issues. Three countries. And one of them, we all be watching things on the TV screens. The whole world will be watching because of things that are going to be happening there. Because God wants to make a statement to the whole globe that the cradle of civilization, the highest peak of man's achievement, cannot be compared to his kingdom in human hearts. So God will be telling the world, this is the best human effort, systems human beings can build. And see how it's crumbled. See how it's disgraceful. A gazing stock. People will be watching in shock and amazement at this country, which is the best human beings have ever achieved. And two other countries. But across the globe, the mercy of God will whip and lash out this evil thing that has crushed the lives of many and has caused so much pain in the hearts of many. Many are grieving and many cannot even grieve again. But comfort is coming. Restoration is coming. Protection is coming. Amen. Help is coming from above. Because this is who he is. So now people are projecting. By December, how many people are dead? Now we are having so many people contracting the disease. So... People are predicting, people are predicting the worst that could be. But because of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, things will change. Amen. Amen. Because he's leading the body of Christ. He's leading the children of God to the unpredictable. Where God disappoints your fears. Tell the next person, God will disappoint your fears. Tell the next person, the Holy Spirit will cause your fears to fail. Amen. So get ready for your fears to be disappointed. Amen. Get ready. Because when Jesus leads us and guides us, he takes us from the predictable to the unpredictable. The man who is blind, depending on many people for help, is now going to go back to his household and be a center of attraction because he has good news to share. Amen. One that is seen as bad news is now a transmitter of good news. Only Christ Jesus can cause this to become a reality and he will do it in your life. Amen. He will do it for you. Amen. He will. That's who he is. This is the beauty about Christ. The next revelation we discover is that he moves us from attention to solution. He leads and guides us from attention to what? Solution. I've realized most people in the midst of difficulties seek for attention but not solution. When this blind man was brought to Jesus, 
When Jesus held the hand, taking him out, the blind man said, no, no, no. If you are Jesus, I'm happy I met you. Do it right here. Do it here. Most people want attention, not solution. They just want the sympathy. Oh, you've lost your business, huh? You've lost your work. Oh, you lost your job. Oh, oh, so sad. I also lost mine. You know, my friend lost his two months ago, and there's a competition of losing jobs. It's all attention. It's attention. You build friendship around the problem. The problem becomes your friend. Think like the problem, talk like the problem, act like a problem. Very soon you'll be walking like the problem, smelling like the problem. And, and just sympathy. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. And you know what people say? Poor you. They are telling you something. That this attitude is impoverishing your life. It's dissipating the wealth of God in you. Poor you. Poor soul. Attention. But Jesus moves him. He said, I don't want you to be the center of attraction because everybody's watching. Ooh, we'll see what's going to happen. Oh, sorry. He's blind. Look at him. Sad blind man. No. Jesus pulled him out of the center of attraction. He brought him aside. Because you came to Jesus not for attention, but for solution. Circumstances must cease, must change. Situations must change. Amen. There should be a transformation. The blood of Christ was not shared for fanfare and entertainment. It was shared so that our lives can be built up. We can be edified. He shed his blood. He suffered on the cross so he can bring us the gains of the love of the Father. Amen? Yes. So from attention to solution. Nobody may call you. Nobody may send a text message or email. Nobody may pat you on your back. You may feel all alone in your room. But understand, God is on your case and solution is on the way. Amen. The beauty is that when the solution comes, you don't have to crave for attention. People will look for you. Yeah, yeah. Some people have forgotten your telephone number, but very soon they will find it. Yes, after God has finished with you, after the, the Lord has done what he wants to do in you, through you, and for you, people will look for you. So abandon the attention and focus on Jesus for the solution. Amen? Partner with Jesus. Cooperate with him to bring solution. And you get all the attention you want. He leads and guides us from the comfortable to the uncomfortable. To the comfortable to the what? Uncomfortable. From comfortable to uncomfortable. You wake up, people lift you, they cook for you, they serve the meal, they feed you, they wash your clothes. But now you're going to do all those jobs by yourself. He leads us to a place of personal responsibility. Not just resting on people. And that is why most people have issues with Jesus. Because this is how he functions. He will move you from the comfortable to the uncomfortable. And that is why most people don't get healed or get solutions in problems. Why? Because they want the comfortable miracle. Comfortable breakthrough. But the miracle and the breakthrough will release a sense of responsibility. Every miracle or blessing you receive from God releases a sense of responsibility. Because now you become a steward of that miracle. You're supposed to take good care of it and pass it on to others. So when your eyes are open as a blind man, now you are going to be a productive citizen of that town. Instead of consumption, you are moving to production. That's the next one. He moves us from consumption to what? To production. Consumption is please. One dirham, please. One dirham, please. But now, he has to find a job. He needs to work. Because he can see clearly. 
He can engage his talents, his expertise, and abilities for a fruitful life. From the comfortable to the uncomfortable. And from consumption to what? To production. Tell the next person in Jesus' name. In these unusual times, by the help of the Spirit of Christ, you are moving from the comfortable to the uncomfortable. From consumption to productivity. In Jesus' name. Amen. So for some of you, you are just spending all your savings. But you need to trust Jesus this week to give you an idea that can start a fantastic business that will end up employing people. Amen? Yes. Yes. He leads and he guides us from over-dependence to interdependence. Over-dependence to what? Interdependence. Now, let nobody fools you, fool you about independence. There's nothing like independence. It's an illusion. Because God wired every human being to interdepend, to connect with each other. Satan had the idea of independence and God kicked him so hard from heaven, we cannot find him. Because that idea is an illusion. It's a deception. The greatest deception is to seek for independence. Because you are never, in, you are never independent. Everybody is dependent one way or the other on the other person. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A country can be so powerful, but you need some little country to produce little things like onions for your economy to, ra to run. If there's a shortage of onions in the Middle East, God have mercy. So every country is somehow, some way, depending on one country or the other for something. The same way with individuals. Everybody needs somebody. Tell the next person, everybody needs somebody. Yeah. Some of you are thinking of leaving earth. You want to go to Jupiter or Mars. You still depend on a space station. A space shuttle that is controlled from a, sta a station. And in case that person sleeps off, like what some of you are doing, that thing will bypass Mars and end up in Pluto. <laughs> are you here with me? So we all depend on somebody. As we sit here, there are planes flying over our head. But there's no chaos here because there's a control tower and people are there telling him, keep moving, stay 30,000 feet. There's control. And that big iron in the sky is dependent on some tiny person in a little room. So never think you are going to get independent. You are never going to be independent. You will depend on somebody. Right now, the dinner you are thinking about was triggered two weeks ago from a village in India. And those produce are going to be shipped, are going to be sent to Dubai, packaged, and at the end of the day, you can buy it at a shopping mall. So everybody's connected to somebody. <laughs> so what Christ does is to move us from over-dependence where people become your Jesus. Human beings become your Jesus. Human beings become your God. When they're upset with you, your God is upset with you. When human beings don't search for you, your God is gone on a holiday. But Christ is God and he's not like a man. He's not like any human being you've ever met. Amen? He moves us from over-dependence to interdependence. So we can depend on him and we can depend on people he propels in our journey. In the journey with Jesus, he has a way of triggering events and circumstances to position people in your life. So there's dependence on God and dependence on God's sent people at a given time in our lives. So Christ moves this person from over-dependence. The people who brought him were the ones helping him and Jesus snatched him from their hands. And now he has to learn to depend on Jesus. 
and the new people he will introduce him to. From over-dependence to interdependence. Amen? Amen? How many of you are learning from Jesus? Good. Are you seeing him in the, in the pages? Are you seeing him in the text? Are you, see G, are you seeing Jesus? Good. He moves us from receiving to resourcefulness. He moves us from receiving to what? Resourcefulness. So you are just receiving, begging. But now you have to be resourceful. You need to also give. The next revelation of Jesus we see in this text. Christ shows those he guides that there are different channels of receptivity unknown to others. Christ shows to those he guides different channels of receptivity that others do not know. Christ shows to those he guides different channels of what? Receptivity that others do not what? No. All that people know is that you will touch him, you'll be healed. Uh, he will spit on the floor, mix it, mix it up with sand, put on your eyes, go wash. That's all the channels of receptivity people know. But for the first time, he was going to introduce another channel of receptivity that was unknown to many people. He was going to go directly, pow! And he's going to touch it with his hands. And you are going to receive something you never had. God has many channels of making available to us his resources. He has many channels of making available to us his help. There are many ways God employ to bring to his people, to his loved ones, what they have been expecting from him. These are days we ask the Holy Spirit to broaden our understanding. Because at times you pray, 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 and God brings the answer, but he uses an unfamiliar channel. If you are not careful, you will miss it. Are you here? If you are not careful, you miss it. Some people were living in Jericho, praying every day. Lord, there's this man cheating us. He's taking my money. Oh, God, have mercy on me. Now God answers the prayer. Jesus comes to Jericho. And when he comes to Jericho, there's this man called Zacchaeus that wants to see Jesus, climbs a tree, and Jesus comes there. And I believe when Jesus looked up, he's thinking this is the breakthrough of many families in this city. Come on, are you here? This is the breakthrough. Answered prayer is on the tree. <laughs> because that guy is going to be touched by the love of God and he's going to say, if I've cheated anybody, hallelujah, I give four times. Financial harvest in the city is hanging on a tree. <laughs> so some of you are looking in the shopping malls, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, when God actually has planted somebody on a tree, <laughs> but you cannot see. So God has different channels of supply, different channels he employs to deliver to you what you are trusting him for. And we need God's grace to help us to be sensitive such that we'll be able to locate that channel and not miss out. If Jesus calls somebody blind today and spit on his eyes, immediately he takes the cell phone, police station, a pastoral abuse going on in the Shaja Worship Center. But that is the channel. It doesn't make sense, but it's the channel that the creator has employed to download in your life what you expect from him. And it will require some humility and some self-control, at least for some few minutes. Because some of you go, what did he put on my eyes? Tell me again. I don't believe this. Before he tells you to
to look up, you slapped him six times and missed the greatest blessing or breakthrough of your life. Amen? He's going to Zacchaeus' house and people are gossiping. He's gone to be with a sinner and they don't know he's a breakthrough to many families in the city. Lift your hands and say, Lord, open my eyes that I may see your ways, that I may know your ways and take delivery of heavenly supply. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. He shows us different channels of receptivity that others do not know. Everybody's praying for rain. God, send the rain. God, please send the rain. And Abraham is busy digging wells. <laughs> Abraham is digging wells. Isaac is digging wells. And in that same year, Isaac sowed hundredfold. Because whilst everybody's looking up, the channel of supply was down there. May God open your eyes. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes. That throughout this month, you will discover the channels of God's supply. Amen? Amen. That God will help you discover the channels of delivery of the supplies he has earmarked for your life. Amen? Is somebody discovering Jesus? Amen. The next revelation, Christ does not abandon us when we fail to manifest the results he expects from us. Christ does not abandon us when we fail to manifest the results he expects from us. Christ does not abandon us when we fail to manifest the results he expects from us. He's such a patient savior. Such a patient help. The spirit of Christ is patient, long-suffering. He stops everything he's doing, give you an exclusive time, walk with you out of the town, touch you, and without any instruction, you look up and say, I see men like trees. Thank God Jesus is not like some people you know. He would have said, let it be done unto you as you've believed. Goodbye. See you next week. <laughs> After giving you a special time, taking you out, walking with you hand to hand with the Messiah, the creator of the universe holding your hand, He spit on your eyes, touch you, and then you say you see men like trees. It's like you can't help this guy. This guy cannot. There are some people you cannot help. How many of you have heard that? There are some people you can never help. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Never. Never means never. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will still work in you, with you, through you, around you, till his beauty is seen in your life. Can you clap your hands for him? No one like Jesus. No one like Jesus. He still was patient and touched him again. He touched him again. He was not rushing out. He was not saying you are wasting time. You are marking time. No. He doesn't abandon us when we fail to manifest the results he expects. He's a Christian, she's a Christian sister, he's a Christian brother, and there are expectations. So you expect that brother to behave in a certain way. You expect that sister to react in a certain way because this is what you expect. And if they make one mistake, you take them to the cross and nail them there. It's like, that's it. That's it, that's it. This guy, this sister is a demon and nothing can change that is not how Jesus is. He's still going to work through his word. He's even going to bless you on credit just to help you to open up and yield for his spirit to accomplish in you what he has planned. This is the beauty about Jesus. Took time and touched him again. He said, don't worry, I'm not rushing. We're going to stay at this till results 
a sin. And some of you think he's abandoned your work, he's abandoned your finances. No, he's still on your case. Amen. And very soon a miracle will show up. You would get a news that will cause you to dance for joy and praise him. There will be a different news coming to your house soon. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes. Because he doesn't leave you halfway. He's not brought you this far to disappoint you. He's not brought you this far to abandon you. No. He held your hand through the years. He protected you, provided for you, sustained you, saved you, filled you with the Holy Spirit, taught you the word of God, brought you into the inn, which is the church, gave you a pastor, gave you the miracle of the Bible, shed his blood for you. He did all of those things not to disgrace you. You will overcome every burden, every impediment, every struggle. This is not how things are going to be. A beautiful change is coming your way. Because he doesn't abandon us when we fail to manifest the results he expects. He believes in his expertise to work on our hearts, to work on our lives, till our lives become a reflection of him. Amen. Amen. Can you say thank you, Jesus, for that? Amen. Amen. There is a human tendency to give up. That, that blind man could have even given up. Say, Jesus, you've done enough. Thank you very much. Save the rest of your time for others. Some people abandon Jesus when they've prayed, loved, cared, given, trusted, believed, forgiven, and nothing is changing. They say, Jesus, is enough. I've tried you for two years, three years, ten years. It's okay. Move to others. I don't want to bother you anymore. If he has not given up on you, it's not wise for you to give up on him. Amen? Tell the person, if he's not giving up on you, it's not wise to give up on him. Amen. The beauty about Jesus is that he's able to work with us from the minimum to the maximum. Can you stand? Please stand. Worship leaders, please come up. I want you to stretch your two legs like this. Don't ask me what I'm doing. This is the first time in the COVID that you are exercising. Let's do it. Say from the minimum to the maximum. Most people have center boat problem. They cannot move. Let's go minimum to the maximum. Again, minimum. Say Jesus Christ is leading me from the minimum to the maximum. Hey, some of you still not moving. <laughs> it's very important. It's good for your knees. Let's go again. Minimum to maximum. If you go home and somebody asks you, what did you learn tonight? Don't speak. Just do this. Watch it. He works with us from the minimum to the maximum. From seeing human beings as trees to a point where you can have clarity. You can see people really good. So it might not be good in your life tonight. This week, this month, this period may not be good. But that is not how things are going to be forever. He's holding your hand. He's leading you. Trust him. It's moving from minimum to maximum. Tell the next person is moving from minimum to maximum. Say, Jesus Christ leads me and he guides me by his spirit from minimum to maximum. Some of us, our prayer life is at the minimum level. Our appetite for the word of God, very low. Our desire to invest in the kingdom of God, very low. Our tolerance, very low. Because you get into a point, you are tired of the faces you see at home. But love is going to resurrect. Amen. Generosity is going to resurrect. Prayer life is going to resurrect. Amen. Because our Father is going to hold our hand, guiding us each day and week. 
as we get to the end of this year at end of December you are going to move from minimum to maximum step by step progress by progress one breakthrough after another one open door after another one link after another you are moving from minimum to maximum hallelujah look at the next person and say minimum let's go again again amen so tomorrow in the traffic if you see somebody do this don't think he's crazy he's prophesying from to hallelujah so shall it be some of you think you're gonna have a setback but suddenly the greatest miracle you've ever experienced is gonna break forth receive it in Jesus name amen amen hallelujah Christ indicates to those he leads Christ indicates to those he leads that at times there are atmospheres in certain location that is not conducive for divine surprises Christ indicates to those he's leading and guiding that at times Certain atmospheres in certain location is not conducive for divine surprises. He's indicating to us, God's children, that at times at certain locations, the atmosphere there doesn't permit him to release divine surprises, which we call miracles. Amen. Jesus could have healed him right in the town, but the atmosphere was toxic and poisonous. Can you go to somebody and hit the person say change the atmosphere i say hit the person take your chance change the atmosphere change it change it amen he moved him from one location to another because the atmosphere there was poisonous you have all kinds of evil ninjas watching and jesus said let's get out of this place let's check out of town amen let's check out of town this is a truth revealed to those Jesus is guiding and leading. It's not revealed to everybody. At times when you are praying in your bedroom and you are feeling a resistance, it's heavy. Just move from the bedroom to the living room. Get to the bathroom and suddenly the atmosphere changes. How many of you have experienced that? At times you have to leave your house and walk on the streets and be praying. Just walk on the streets and suddenly the power of the Holy Spirit begin to settle on you. Tell the next person, move. Look at him, say, move. Say, change location. Change the atmosphere. This is the time some of you have to visit certain places. Some of you have been here in UAE for many years. You don't know Burj Khalifa. Just take time and just go and walk there. By looking at that tall building, God will be telling you the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. This is how tall I am over every problem you have. Go to certain places. Don't stay in the house. Mm -hmm. You're going to die very early. Change location. Amen? Change location. Change the atmosphere. You come home and everything is very heavy. Put on a worship tape. Let the songs play. Amen. Let the song, because the atmosphere you live in determines what grows or dies in your life. The atmosphere you live in determines what grows or what dies in your life. The atmosphere you live in determines what will grow or die in your life. If you are in a toxic and poisonous atmosphere, you will not excel. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He could have touched him in this town, but he brought him out of the town, outside. Touched him and said, don't go back to that poisonous atmosphere. Don't go back to the town. Because there are certain locations that will have certain atmospheres at certain times. That is not conducive for divine surprises. Not conducive for miracles. 
and there are times there are certain locations when you step there everything good begins to break out amen it's called mount zion the gathering of the saints amen a place of innumerable company of what angels hallelujah amen can you lift your hands to him i don't know about you but it makes me love him more yes god thank you jesus thank you jesus don't be afraid it's moving from minimum to maximum he's guiding and leading you Lord, we receive your grace to yield our hearts to you, our lives to you, our families, our children to you, the education of our children to you. We receive grace to yield all our burdens and cares upon you, for you care for us. We release it. We release it. We release it, Lord. We release the fear. We release the panic. We release the bills unpaid. We release all our burdens. We release it. We release it to you, Lord. The incurable situation, the unconquerable mountain, that situation that looks impossible to conquer we release it to you lord we release it to you we give you our lives we entrust our lives to you thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus lift your hands and i just want you to bless his name amen yes god Thank you.